Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called the rose. I like that. What you need to make the rose are some punnet raspberries, some strawberries thinly sliced, one orange thinly sliced, a cinnamon stick, a fourth cup of Contro liqueur or orange liqueur, two tablespoons of castor sugar, some rosé wine chilled, and two cups of lemonade chilled and some crushed ice to serve. So you are going to combine the raspberries, the strawberries, the orange, the cinnamon sticks, the orange liqueur, and the castor sugar in a large jug. Cover with plastic wrap and place in the fridge for 30 minutes to develop the flavors. Then you're going to add the chilled rosé wine and lemonade, remove and discard the cinnamon stick, add the crushed ice, and serve immediately. That sounds tasty to me. That's a rose. <sighs> Jessica got bougie, tipsy homegirl, and got <laughs> bougie with these drinks. She said it's summertime. You're about to have your girls' night. We're back outside. You need to impress people. No more shots sprinkled with lemonade. We're not doing that anymore. We've got to class it up and step it up. And stop just pouring shots. You need to prepare these drinks before your guests arrive. 30 minutes ahead of time, it needs to chill. Let the flavors come together. I know that's right. I know that's right. We back outside. Who? We. <laughs> 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 Mitch, I could be outside. You be going to sleep. I be trying not to because I'm I do be tired, but I'd be I'm gonna be outside. And and I just wanna say this. What? Just because I have a boyfriend, I can still be outside and I'm You can be outside, but okay. you be going to sleep. <laughs> but you haven't I'm just so tired. My flight is at eight. Bitch, so is mine. <laughs> Let's go, we just stay up. You, you did are do good a young one night. girl. No, I'm really not. You really are. Because this weekend, it caught up to me. This Well, two weekends ago, I guess, um, when it was Carrie's birthday. Now, that's a young girl. My friend Carrie, you know Carrie. Is she our age? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Carrie can party, party, party. I made it to everything in the daytime. I did. I even made it after my wreck. To dinner. I didn't make it to That's anything wild. else. But I was just like, this is my friend. She's so sweet, so supportive. I'm just a couple blocks away and I'm hungry. Let me limp on in this party. Yeah, like, I mean, it wasn't, it was just dinner. I'm just gonna sit down. It wasn't nothing too crazy. She kept it chill this year, chill for her. Um, but she can stay up all night. I cannot. I was like, ooh, this is gonna need some drugs. Yeah, I can party party when I have when I have drugs. Mm-hmm. But when I don't. Well, usually. I'm still gonna go to sleep. I just, I'm a tired girl. And it's, mm. Do you know, and I know we're ways away, but do you know what you wanna do for your birthday this year? I don't. I wanna go somewhere though. I wanna take a trip. Um, I already bought one birthday gift to myself. Mm -hmm. That was seeing Beyonce. So I'm gonna go with two of my good girlfriends. But me and one of the girls, we were talking this weekend. And we were like, you know what? We really want to go on a trip. Mm -hmm. I was like, and it doesn't even have to be about my birthday, even though we want to go around my birthday. Mm -hmm. um, but let's do it. Let's just do it. Why let's not? Just do it. And y'all got kids, so it's only going to be so long before. Do you want them to bring the kids? Hell no. Oh. <laughs> it's a trip for the mamas and me. <laughs> But I'm just saying, like... Mommy and me, me and, me and Kiki. <laughs> yeah, the mommies and me. Uh, but their kids are almost to the age where they're in real school. Right mm -hmm. now, it's like daycare, preschool type thing mm -hmm. where it doesn't matter as much. So I'm like, y'all only have so long. And I'm getting sad because it's like, I'm about to lose my girls. It's only going to be dinner parties. and I mean, that's cool, too. But we need to go on this trip. And yeah. I think that they deserve it. They work hard. And they being mothers too. Yeah. Both of them work and got kids. You know, and husbands. Oh, that's two kids right there. A lot of people now I see on Instagram and on TikTok. Rest in peace. About to be rest in peace to TikTok. Um, but where their girls are doing like showers, like they're like, you don't have to just have a baby shower when you're having a baby or a wedding shower. Like we can just shower each other with like love and friendship. Oh, that's cute. Isn't like that a cute? friendship shower. A friendship shower, but it's like one main friend that's getting showered. Why they don't do it on her birthday? I might do that for my birthday. It's going to be a Medina shower. Why not? Why not? Because the people don't be wanting to give gifts these days. They just show I up. love giving gifts. I love coming to a birthday and bring, even if it's just a card with a gift card in it. I love bringing a gift. I've been trying gift. to do better about that. I'm not really um, a big gift person. Like, 
I'll share an experience with somebody and pay for it. Mm-hmm. But I've been trying to pay more attention to realize, are these, do they like that sort of thing or would they prefer a gift? I don't really need a gift, but I like gifts. And it feels good when I do get them. Mm-hmm. It does feel good, especially when you get the best gift. What? And you bring the best <laughs> gift. And everybody's oh, like... see, you are so competitive. <laughs> Medina, you are literally the most competitive person I know. I've never thought about the best gift. Not amongst friends. Now... With my nieces, yes. <laughs> I be competing with the grandparents. <laughs> I can't Because who going to take care of me when I'm old? What do your nieces call their grandparents? My my mom is Noni. Noni? Uh, let's see. They call they call Derek's mom Granny. And then they call my mom. I, we both hate the same Momo. Oh, That's cute. What do you want to be called? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Kiki. <laughs> uh, I heard somebody, who was it? Nini, I think she said a grandma. I like that. And then I used to have a friend, they called their grandmother Sweet Mama. I thought that was so cute. That is I want a cute, cute name, not a traditional name. Um, I had a friend in junior high, it. she called her grandma Teddy Graham. Teddy Graham? Mm-hmm. That's cute. I've never heard that one. I called my grandma. Well, I call one of my grandma's mama, actually, the one I grew up with. Mm-hmm. And the other one I call her grandmother. It's very formal. Grandmother? Grandmother. Wow. Cool. And yeah. I call my grandma <laughs> Graham. My Graham. Graham. And uh, I've always called my granddad's, rest in peace, granddad. Yeah, I know. And then, let's see. Uh, Madison and Joe. It's weird because we have the same grandparents, but they have different names. Like the younger kids have different names than me and Mallory. Mm-hmm. And it feels like me and Mallory are not the same generation of the family because we're older than everybody. Mm-hmm. But they call them grandma and grandpa. So normal. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know what anybody calls anybody else. Uh, yeah. What do your nieces call you? Auntie Diva. And they really call you that? Auntie Diva, yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's how I introduce myself to them. Sometimes they call me Kiki. And I don't mind that as long as you're not calling me mama, okay? Mm -hmm. And I make sure when we're out places, I'm always like, I just need to call your mom. Everybody needs to know these are not my kids. Don't think I got all these damn kids. I took Zane out to eat last night. Y'all, my nephew's here and he is at the studio with us, but he cannot hear us just so y'all know this is not child abuse. (laughs) Um, And we went, I took him to go get tacos from Suprika. And Mm. I took him to the trampoline world. I love that. I wish Walker was here so they could have a play day. We've been yeah. trying to plan a play day since they were two. I know, right? We are horrible And Walker moms. is gone. <laughs> and so I took him to get tacos and we sat down and I asked for a kid menu and the waitress was like, okay, young man, now you be good and give mommy a break. I said, mommy? I am auntie. Okay. And they don't even call me that. They call me, Zane calls me Dean or Deanie and then the little ones call me Dean Dean. You don't want no auntie on it? They, I don't it's, care. Yeah, I don't really care about the auntie part either. Yeah. Again, as long as it's not mama. Uh-huh. No mama, mommy. I remember one time Giselle tried to play me. She's old enough. She's 13 now. She tried to act like she was my daughter. And I was like, you really trying to block right now? You really trying to block? And she just thought it was the funniest thing. And she was just laughing, laughing, laughing. And so I said, I got something for your ass. So the next place we went, she couldn't get shit. I went to get dessert. You can't have none. You played all day. You are obviously had too much sugar. I'll be tricking off on these babies like I can afford it. I know. Where are and your I'm parents? Like, why did I do that? Do, do they think you're rich? Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, I took Zane to the mall and Phipps, he grabbed a pair of Balenciaga sneakers and said, can I get well, these? On. And I said, well. We go to Target. You, let's try them on. <laughs> we not even. Because I wanted him to know we can we can get this if we wanted it. I got this thing you about. You bought him some Balenciaga? Oh. I didn't buy them, but I didn't want him to feel like he couldn't touch them and couldn't try them on. I got this oh. thing about people teaching kids humility too young, and now they think we poor. Zane was like, we can't afford this. I said, we're rich. And we was okay. kings and queens. You know what? Actually, I agree with you on that because I don't like when I'm with my nieces or other young kids, and they'd be like, oh, I hear them talking about budget and being broke and all this stuff. And it's like. <laughs> appreciate, you know, what people give you and mm-hmm. understand that it does cost. But don't be ever thinking that you can't achieve it or you can't buy it. I'm not buying it. But if you work hard, young man <laughs> or young girl, you too can buy these things. Yeah, okay? and another thing, touch everything in the store. I see the white kids and they touch all the things. It's not a, ah, 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 ah. touch everything that you want to touch. It'll be okay. If we break it, we'll talk about it later. Touch it and don't be scared. That's what I do with Zane and the other ones too. See? And see, I don't like how those white kids be acting in the store, so we're not acting like what? that. But it's not not to be scared of the product. That's what I'm saying. It makes kids scary. And it's well, like I'm a- not taking them into the nice stores like that. Oh, I am. 
They need to, it's too many of them. If it was one at a time, we can handle it. Like, you just got Zane. If it's, mm-hmm. wa- now me and Walker, me and Walker go to five-star restaurants. We're going and whining right. and dining and we're picking out the cheeses and the meats. Those girls, whew. Them babies. <laughs> they, are, they are wild. It's, it's too many of them. <laughs> it's like, when you are with your siblings and you are with other relatives, did you feel like when it was all three of y'all, it was just like, Siblings unite and you could do what you want to do because you have the strength in numbers versus just when you were by yourself. No, because Michael was always the boss. Well, that's how I ran my siblings. She did a good job then. Yeah. Keep y'all in line. She did. And when we flew by ourselves, I remember we used to fly by ourselves when we were very little. Mm -hmm. And, um... Mecca would be like, we're not waiting on the flight attendant. And I would be like, we're supposed to wait on the flight attendant. Wait on the flight attendant for what? Because when, you, when you're an unaccompanied minor, you oh. they give you the little thing, you're supposed to wait. And Mecca would be like, we're not waiting. I'm taking us. And we would be like, we would be like, we're not supposed to do this. She would be like, grab your things and come on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and y'all grab those things and came on. I know that's right. Mm-mm. Oh, you guys. Welcome back to Cocktails. Yeah, we're here. chit chat. Um, I want to remind you guys, we have more live shows. This weekend, we are in Toronto at the Royal Theater. With my baby daddy and my husband. His name is Drake, a.k.a. Aubrey Graham, and I'm going to get pregnant by that nigga. Shout out to Julie, a f- former sponsor of us, and I hope you get yours in the mail, because that's what he's going to be sending you, hon. Uh, okay, so... We will be in Toronto this weekend, and then next weekend we'll be back at home in Atlanta for the Natural Hair Show. Um, I think it's naturalhairshow.org, but check the description box for the exact link. And it's only like 5 or $10 to go. We're going to be there on Saturday at the main stage. Come see us. Come check out the rest of the exhibits. I heard they have a $5,000 barber competition. Ooh. I don't know what you guys do for a living, but if you are into hair, beauty, um, business, Come out. It's going to be a really nice event. And then we're going to be at another event on Sunday, speaking on a panel. What was it again? I keep forgetting. Grind Pretty. Grind, Grind Pretty, pretty. Fest. Mm-hmm. They have stuff all weekend, too, but don't worry about going until Sunday. That's when we're going to be there. And then um, we will be, in May, we have two more live shows. If you haven't seen us this year, you might want to get your tickets because who knows if we'll come back out. I mean, I'm tired. Medina tired. Yeah. We miss our families. I miss my bed. Um, so May 9th, we will be in Birmingham, Alabama mm. at Stardome. And then May 20th, we will be at the studio at the factory in Deep Ellum in Dallas, Texas. So you guys make sure you put the link in the group chat, plan a date night, get it popping. Come on, put your spanks on. Or just come on. by yourself and meet some people there. Yeah, come and have a good night out on the town. And if you are interested in sponsoring any of our live shows, make sure you send us a message or send us an email. Cocktails. Sales at cocktailspod.com. That's C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S-P-O-D dot com. It is worth every dollar. Mm-hmm. And then if you're interested in purchasing any of our merch, we have our card game that will be restocking soon. Um, we have T-shirts and who knows what else will come up. But head to I'm curious to know dot com and you can make your purchases there. Uh, and I, oh, sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cocktails. We have bonus content on there. No matter when you join, you can access all of the previous content and then everything going forward. And pretty soon we're going to start back with doing our lives. We actually, um, when we did our guest appreci- or listener appreciation episode, she was a patron and we only opened it up for our patrons. So right. should we ever do something like that again, it'll be the same. And you can get on uh, Patreon. We still communicate with people on there. It's a nice way to meet new people, mm-hmm. like-minded people. It's a fun little vibe. It's a fun little vibe. So join. And like he said, you might be able to be on the next listener appreciation episode if we do it again. If you have a business, you can plug it when you come on. So join yeah. Patreon right now. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? What? I'm about to do it right now. So I meant to do it for last week's episode because speaking of the listener appreciation, did y'all listen to the episode? If you didn't, please pause this one and go back because we had a good time with Big Booty Sham. We had a big, a big booty sham, a good time with Big Booty Sham. Now, Big Booty Sham had so much fun. While she was sitting here chit-chatting with us, she got a little loose lip. Now, listen, we asked her and we did tell her, like, you know, you got to think about this. Like, everybody doesn't think about the impact that what you say has. 
So she she tags me. <laughs> and everybody forgets that you, there's a microphone in front of you. We've forgotten at times, but now we're used to it. We say some yeah. embarrassing shit. It's just whatever. We just got to roll with it. But it's like, you're going back to your regular life. You can't blame it on the podcast because this isn't your life. So uh, she sent a text message, and I just wanted to make sure I read it to you guys. Um... She wanted to add a cocktail because the people y'all ate her up. Did they? Yes. Um, and I won't read the rest of that because it's not gonna help her case and I wanna help her. So this is what she says in quotes. And I am going to edit this for you, big booty sham, because you didn't clean it up enough. Okay. I feel like Carisha when she was honest with y'all and admitted that she liked to be peed on and y'all judged her and was calling Puffy P. Diddy. My boo is not a lame. And even if he is, she said he's my lame and we're doing what works for us. But if this was in print, I would put redacted. Okay, it wasn't my intention to make him seem less than the great man that he is to me, but I'm human. And sometimes we focus on the negative too much. Everyone's relationship is different, and that's okay. Y'all should learn to appreciate people's honesty and not be so damn judgmental. That's why the world's so fake now. A motherfucker be real, oh. and y'all be real with y'all, and y'all make them feel bad because you don't understand. Sham. You know she was rolling her neck at the end, and that's just what she had to say. She was just trying to be real, and y'all made her feel... She was just trying to crack a little jokey joke. She didn't really mean to make her man sound like a lame. She loves him and appreciates him from her other bedroom. And... And, you know, I would say to Sham that we already know that had to we had to learn. You don't even have to explain it to these niggas that decide to go in on people in comments. Well, I think she was more so concerned about her man. Did he listen? He's old. Does he even know what a podcast is? My he old niggas saw, never knew. Because the old niggas, some, a lot of them are still on Instagram. So you got to think about the fact that a lot of people don't even really listen to the podcast. Oh, even when they say they do. Up. And they just see the clip. I hope we didn't, like, get her kicked out of her Well, home. we didn't say nothing. We try to help. And I just try to help again. And to her man, she really does love you. She just thought she was going to try her hand at cracking a few jokes, making it light. She didn't think you would hear or be offended, but she love you down, okay? She and does. she going to be cooking breakfast all week. Mm-hmm. Well, I just wanted to put that statement out there. Um, I guess uh, we can move on to weird sex. Yeah. You said a man is not a necessity, a man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Or did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. All right. You guys, I found um, an interesting little tool, a little gadget, um, made by China. Um, so, if you are in a long distance relationship, do you ever find yourself missing your person's touch? Yes, I, I'm the type, I wanna be up under you. Okay, well you can't be up under them with this device. But it will help you be able to get some of those hot, tingly sensations. So yeah. this guy, some smart-ass engineer, just follow me, okay? So imagine you have a device and you you FaceTime your man mm -hmm. um, or your woman, whatever, whatever the person is. So you FaceTime it and then it's like you both have these devices and somehow um, it's warm. It's moving, and it's going to mimic your partner's kiss. So it says that the device is equipped with warm, moving silicone lips that mimic a real kiss by recreating the movement. It's on your phone, Gosh. or it's like a piece it's of... It's a thing, but you, okay. you can be on the phone and be like, I want to kiss you, and then they can kiss the thing that they have. You have one, they have one. Kind of like those lights, but like it's moving. Um, yeah, it's a little weird, but that's why I'm talking about it now. Okay, so... 
Um, you, they'll recreate the movement, pressure, and temperature of a user's lips. In addition to duplicating the feel of a kiss, it can transmit kissing sounds. Could you imagine if it mm. glitched in the middle and you kissing your little fake thing and it like starts attacking you or it just has a strange noise that could really kill the vibe? Okay, anyway, to send a kiss, users download an app on their phone and plug the device into their phone's charging port. Next, they pair up with their partner on the app and initiate a video call. From there, users can transmit the replica kisses back and forth. You gotta be James weird to Zongli, do some shit like this. The lead inventor. This sounds like a good gadget for jail. Yeah, but I'm because I'm not doing this. Or jail, or um, if you're broken long distance and it's like you really. In the first year, you don't know how you're going to get to the person and you're on a remote island. Well, you wouldn't have Wi-Fi. I don't know who's <laughs> using this, but I think I think there's a market for it. If they can um, just have some computer-generated kisses and temperatures and it doesn't rely on another person. Because think about all the people who spend thousands and thousands of dollars on those sex dolls. That how much like does that cost, people. did they say? I don't know. It seems like it's still I feel still like it's going to be expensive. Definitely. I feel like it's probably still in development. He said that um, in his university, he was in a long-distance relationship with his girlfriend, so they only had contact with each other through the phone. That's where the inspiration came from. They're probably just, like, people who live, like, Black Mirror, like that video game where the dudes were fucking in the game. Like, some people just get so caught up in the internet and, like, Things like that. That is I see very that. weird. Nigga, if you don't buy this fucking flight and come here and kiss me in my mouth in real last life, I'm going to punch you in your throat. Well, I'm not I'm not I'm using punching you in your throat. I'm going to kiss somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? What have I spent thousands of dollars on a fucking kissing flashlight for? That's something. That's that's very odd. But And what it's going to taste like? It's not going to taste like you. It's going to taste like fucking Magnum condoms. Yuck. Long distance anyway. is hard. And it's really... You, what do you think about long distance? You feel like... You gotta... I feel like you have to have a little bit of money to make it work and feel oh, like it's not long a distance. A little bit. You need a little bit more, like, a lot of bit on the little bit side. Mm -hmm. You need some money. Because yeah. to make it work, you need to be able to see each other still. And not you be don't stressed it. about it. Yeah. And then it's like... You gotta, you gotta communicate a lot... Sounds a little scary at times. But then on the other hand, it's like part of me feels like it sounds scary. But then the other part, I think that would probably be ideal for me. It's ideal for me. I'm not going to lie. It's like I enjoy being with someone who we can see each other when we want to see each other. And then we can go our separate ways. We can still talk. Mm -hmm. But it's not like one of us feels like we always have to physically be with the other. Yeah, and, and we see each other very often, but the little breaks, they are nice. I would never say that because it sounds rude, but... Oh, <laughs> like, what? I always wonder if his friends, like, know yes. who we are and listen to the show. You think so? You think they've listened? I don't think people really go as far as to listen. I really think people just watch the clips, mm -hmm. especially by the reactions that some people give. I'm like, that was a hot clip. You didn't even watch the whole conversation that was chopped and screwed, but okay. It's called marketing, people. Okay, it's called click the actual link and watch the whole damn thing, please. And go write a review. Have y'all still been writing reviews and yeah, subscribing? They have. I took a break from reading reviews because people was roasting me. Yeah, I, ha I had to go through that same thing, but I, I subscribe to a newsletter that gives them to me every week. So for a while, I was not looking at all, but now I've been back on it. Like, okay, let's watch the charts. Mm -hmm. Where are we at on the charts? I like to look at the worldwide charts. Um, South Africa, hello. I wish we could do a live show up. in South Africa. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a live show in South Africa, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, the Bahamas. Jamaica is really high up there. Y'all really fucking with us down in the Caribbean. And I appreciate I it. I love that. I always be confused about the little places where I feel like it's very white and there's no English. But uh, I'm like, do y'all have a translator app? Or maybe y'all just know English. I just, if we did a show in South Africa, imagine what our what our dance would be. We busting out African moves. We shaking heads. We hitting them with the arms. I'm ready. We I would love to see it. <laughs> did you learn a routine while you were there? Did you do I any didn't. traditional dances now? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, that that would be fun. Oh, I can't yeah. wait till we do a, a international show like on the other side. 
That would be amazing. That would be great. Um, Even y'all keep like, telling your friends so that we can get over there. Could you imagine if somebody really rich in like Thailand was like, Thailand. just listen, just hear me out. They're just really rich. They're like, it's not going to oh. be a huge crowd. It's actually a bachelorette. We're about to have our Beyonce Dubai performance. Yeah, but it's like a bachelorette thing. They're like, we just want you guys to come and host a bachelorette party. We're going to pay you each 50 grand each. And we want you I'm to- on the way. <laughs> My passport is good for 10 years or nine now. I can say We as want you she- girls well, to just come and make sure everyone has a good time. You know, maybe we'll set you up on a panel. We want you to host some good discussions. You have to have sex. I'll do it for 50000 I would, too. I was just wondering. And I'll be like, what? I mean, maybe I won't do any penetration sex, but I'll finger some pussies. Bitch, please. <laughs> 50000 <000. laughs> <laughs> Lick a little booty hole. You what y'all need to do? That would like. be amazing. <laughs> That's the new wave with podcasting. Hire us for small crowds. Large money. That would be nice. Could you imagine? That would be so nice. I like, would really want to be like, okay, we've got to spend like five thousand dollars on our production for our outfit. Yes, and, and we our, need some pyrotechnics. It's probably cheap over there, so we could really blow the band. That would be really fun. I'm thinking about a bachelorette party, and imagine like it's like we you hire hosts, and to, they provide all the fun. There's no if ands or buts about it. You are making the fun. You host the games. You make sure everyone is having fun. Uh-huh. If someone is crying, you're in the room with her, making sure she's okay. If someone's throwing if up, you you're pulling hair back. If you got a pussy to get her to calm down, you have to do it. If you have to text a husband a lie, you're on it. Okay, and take the pictures. If you need to edit. It, send it to me. Period. Oh, we could make this happen. Yeah. That might be, maybe next year we don't need to do live shows. <laughs> Bachelor at Weekends only. Period. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, before we retire on live shows, we do want to still shout out some of our amazing sponsors that we had. Uncomfortable Truth. Uh, you guys, Uncomfortable Truth was one of our Atlanta sponsors yes if, if you guys go to un- uncomfortable truth lifestyle.com you will see some amazing apparel apparel with funny sayings um i know that i took one of the shirts and it said <laughs> <laughs> i said pussy paper something Puppy, pussy paper piece and i said oh my I gosh i love right. this mm-hmm. it's my sex t-shirt Oh, that's mm-hmm. cute. I did not take one, but we did give uh, some out when we were in, not Detroit, Pontiac. Mm-hmm. Um, but their saying is, you know, these days the cancel culture has everybody censoring themselves and living through filters. I mean, I'm on a little filter. But the reality is we are a culture and there is nothing about it that can be censored or watered down. So when you go to their website, you're going to see all sorts of fun sayings, uh, provocative sayings, my type of stuff. Uncomfortable truth is raw and very necessary. It dares to say what everyone is thinking, but reluctant to say. Always speaking to your authentic self, your true identities. It's the truth that is required. So again, go to www.uncomfortabletruthlifestyle.com. They have various uh, clothing items and they have quick shipping. So check them out. Okay, you guys, we're going to dive into our topic today, which is, is this, uh, well, wait, before we get into the romantic or corny part of the show, I wanted to know, Kiki, what are your thoughts on courting men? Uh, Showing men. Is that a real question? It's a real question because I overheard you talking to the makeup artist in Detroit about sending a man flowers. The man was like, I want flowers. And she, you know, she had said something about a man wanting something. I recently had my man say that he never got flowers and he was just saying things that he liked. We had a whole appreciation conversation. Top up my wine. Keep going. I'm listening. We talk about too. Yes. <laughs> um, we had a whole appreciation conversation. And it was really interesting because like I care about him. I feel like if it's somebody that I don't care about and you want some appreciation, I'm like, nigga, <laughs> nah. But like, if I care about you, I've started to realize that men, they want to know that they're appreciated. And I don't really see a problem with that. I think that I used to be like, nigga, wait, like I'm the prize. But it's like, if you have a prize, you're the prize and you also have a prize and he just wants to make sure that he feels appreciated. How do you feel about that? And what do you think you need to, um, to match the appreciation that he shows you? 
So I think that initially you asked me about courting and then you switched it to appreciation. I'm not courting a man. Mm -hmm. But I think that there, I agree with you that there's nothing wrong with showing somebody appreciation. I don't think that those things are one and the same. I think that if somebody is telling me how I can show them appreciation, I can be receptive to that. Now, what you overheard was a nigga talking about he wanted some flowers and he don't do shit. Like, there's nothing, I don't appreciate you. Have you ever so, sent a man flowers? No. Would you? If I appreciated a man who wanted flowers, sure. But this particular man wanted flowers for nothing. It's just like the men be trying to get on us as women saying that we just want things without doing anything. That's how I felt about him. And it's like, okay, if you ever get to a point where I feel like I But we really you. do want things without doing anything. Can we agree on that? Um, Sometimes. But I think... It, I, I don't really, honestly, in my real life, I don't walk around demanding stuff from men. Mm -hmm. I don't be demanding gifts. I'm not demanding flowers. I like those things. I think that they're nice. But he was literally telling me he wanted me to show him appreciation by sending flowers sometimes. And it's like, you haven't shown me anything to be appreciative of. Not so if one you, thing. No. So if you want me to send you a gift just because, then say that. Don't try and mask it by, I do these things. You don't be doing nothing but annoying me. He was wrong for that. I mean, he's blocked, so it doesn't even matter. Oh. Yeah. He. I need to send him to the graveyard. Um, <laughs> But... Uh, yeah, I don't think it's anything wrong with doing something for somebody who you like, who you appreciate, who you value. I'm not opposed to people showing love and being soft. I think it's a beautiful thing. There was this clip going around on Instagram, and it, I'm not gonna lie, it made me feel really bad. And I know everyone loves to tell me, specifically men, and one this week a young lady said it, and I was really shocked that I hate men. I don't hate men, um, but well, sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, but there was I don't this, think you hate men. I, I think don't you just hate make men. jokes sometimes I about make, how stupid they are. Yeah. And I'm going well, to continue to joke, do this Because if you know her in real life... I'm sprung. So the, the, <sighs> there was this clip going around. I can't remember what the platform was, but they were giving men, specifically black men, flowers. Like, they were sending these men flowers. And one of the men, his eyes got juicy. One of the guys was like, I've never received flowers in my whole entire life. And they were just like getting the reactions of these black men getting flowers. And I was like, it made me so sad because like, I'm not gonna lie, I have never sent a nigga flowers until about a week and a half ago. You know what? The men have always, up until this moment, and maybe it's just a bit of toxic masculinity. Maybe they thought I was gonna think less of them. But a lot of the men who I did appreciate, I've done things for them, but it's never been flowers because they made it seem like that they would be like kind of offended if but I sent I flowers. Like lying. flowers are too feminine, right? And so they would they make it seem not to say that this is how they actually feel, but how they made certain things seem. It's like why would you do that? I'm not one of your girlfriends. But I, I think feel you have like to do it in a private moment. To... Send, don't, maybe you don't send the flowers to their job. Not to their job, to their you house. You send it to their home, and they're, they're on 1-800-Flowers, and even on certain local uh, b flower boutiques or florists, they can do, like, a manly bouquet. But I even think that it's really... Um, for a man to receive something like that, he has to be comfortable himself. Because sometimes I don't think it's anything that you do, I do... Or the other, they're thinking about their homeboys, they're thinking about judgment, and they're thinking about all these things that weighs on them all the time. So they're scared to accept it, even if it's in private. Like they're it takes thinking a second. about that, but they're also think. I think that they also, the things that I've been doing for a man lately, it's like you, they have those thoughts, and they also have this other thought where it's like, this does. Let me let this wall down. Yeah, let me let this wall down. And it feels really good to feel appreciated. And I know so often we talk about how niggas ain't shit, and we really do be going in on them. And I'm gonna continue that. Don't get it twisted. But I also do want to like shed some light on the men that do act right and the men that do deserve appreciation. And you do deserve a flower every now and again or some homemade brownies or maybe you make a meal out of classy base and you make sure that it's presented to him in a and very beautiful get that way. Meal. And you're going to get that meal and you, 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 you show him how much he is appreciated because I feel like a lot of men in relationships don't feel that. And this is not to make it a battle of the sexes. I understand because there's somewhere, somehow, a woman's that, gonna be that's like, what it's about but me. I can't I'm not talking about you. For the most part, when it comes to dating, we get the upper hand. We do. We get the and things, we get the bills paid, we gifts. get the 
Yes, we get the gifts. We get, we make sure we, the doors are opened. Now, if that don't happen for you, I'm not talking to you, but that happens for me. You get, the man wants you to know that he just appreciates your time. And I am starting to get into a part of life where it's like, I, if I'm sharing my time with you at this point in my life, I appreciate you. And I want you to know it and feel it, even if it's like very minute ways. Like I send you a card of like, thank you for whatever. Like, I think it's important that women remember that. Yes, you're beautiful and yes, you are a prize, but that nigga might be a prize too. And I also think that, you know, I say this, I feel like every week, it is so important to actually talk to the person that you're dating, talk to the person have that you want to have appreciation for or show appreciation for because what she's doing for somebody that might not resonate with your man or your woman or whoever, you know? And so talk to them and really try and figure out what, what is their love language? Like it sounds corny, but those things are real. And it's like, people can try to show you that they care, but if it's a different language, it doesn't always work. Um, and before you go asking somebody to appreciate you, do some shit to be appreciated for. I mean, and that's for everybody. That's for everybody, men or women. You don't get to just be appreciated because you a bad bitch. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I get what you're saying, but yeah. I, but to answer your question, I'm not courting a man, but it's nothing wrong with showing somebody appreciation. I like to do it. I haven't always, but um, I think it's funny that we're. I'm saying all this, and my shirt says, "I love to make." boys cry i saw that shirt earlier i wasn't even gonna bring that shit up you know what pisses me off though sometimes is when you do something to really try and show somebody appreciation and they act like it was nothing you won't get shit else from but that's me. another conversation i feel like that's another conversation that's what i'm learning about relationship like it, with friends and in romantic relationships it's okay because it's also like there's fault on both of us here let's talk about it what do you need for appreciation Cause okay but when we talk about it and we don't get to already. yeah but when we talk about it and it's like hey this was a genuine effort and you just for no real reason feel like it's not okay cool because now it won't happen again no but that's no, not how you no, handle it that is how you handle it i'm not in a relationship i don't have to stick beside somebody just because i know them if the person doesn't value the things that i'm doing and this is a thing that you said you wanted mm mm-hmm. mhm and I do it for you, and then you act like it doesn't matter. No, I'm not going to keep trying to do that. Sometimes I think you need to know when to throw the towel in on something. And in some cases, when somebody... It's like, you ever met a person where they can never be satisfied? Mm -hmm. You have the conversation with them, and you talk to them about what they want or what they need, mm -hmm. and that's communicated very clearly. And then when that's delivered, now it's a problem with that. Well, fuck it. I'm not, there's only so many times we can go through this cycle because then I'm going to realize at some point you don't really care to be open or you, you're not, you're not going to be satisfied. You got to work on you mm -hmm. because everything you say that you want, everything I think that you want that I'm trying to do to show you appreciation and you, it's still not good enough. Well, I'm just not a match and we can move on. I'm not wasting my, the rest of my five years of life left. Five years because I'm old. I'm old. I'm an age from Last thirty week to you seventy. Was about to be thirty. I know, and now I'm about to be seventy-eight. So that is it's crazy. Always, I know. Time comes at you fast. In the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. You go from thirty to seventy-eight. Ooh. Is the pussy still hitting though? You, <laughs> you know, your pussy it is. still gets wet when you're seventy-eight. I want to ask my grandma so bad, but I think I mean, that's disrespectful. I mean, a lot of times, no, because that's what happens in menopause. You might dry up, but you can get your she orgasms. <laughs> you know, depending on how your lifestyle is, it can, my mom never had menopause, and she's 65. I would cry. Well, I would want to go through menopause by Well, then, she didn't I, go through it in the way that her friends went through it. She's not having hot... She don't have a like, period anymore. I don't anymore, care about that she, part, but I don't want the period no more. That's the she part. She doesn't have that's a period the anymore, But she didn't go through all the, like, the stress the, like that Like the went, bad symptoms. Yeah, but uh -oh. she also... My mom doesn't drink. She never did drugs. She doesn't really eat that bad. I'm like, well... Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um. So, okay. So, another topic that we wanted to talk about was... um, Is this corny or romantic? Everybody has like a different spectrum almost. It's like there are some things that you might think are corny, but I might think are romantic. I feel like it's going to be most of the things on the list. But let's that see. you think are corny or romantic? I'm going to 
I think what I think is corny, you're going to think is romantic and vice versa. So if you're, let's say you're about to go on a first date with someone and he writes you a poem and he reads it to you on the date. <laughs> is that romantic or corny? What y'all think? That is uh, corny is as fuck. A, I'm not going to lie. Is it a lie. real poem? It's a or real poem. It... He's like, kiki, kiki. Like spoken word? Yeah. He's like, y'all are, no. you ordered your food. The appetizers are on their way. He's, you're ordering what you want. The drinks are going. You guys are having a good time. He's cute. He's fine. He's like, I just wanted to let oh, you know. Oh, he was fine? He said, I wrote, pass, pretty privileged. I wrote you a special piece for oh, this day. Really? And, you know, if you were a poet, it's not going to last long with me because you're probably too soft for me, honestly. I'm just going to say what it is. Uh, but if you put the poem, I don't really want to hear you recite the poem, I don't think. He's real. He's reading it. He's unraveling the paper and he's just like. Just a better way to do it is maybe put it in a frame. He says, Kiki, Kiki, do you love me? No. Are you riding? And this is not an original poem. He stole it from Drake. <laughs> he just started it like that. No, it's, so, it's plagiarized. Would I'm you laugh? Police. Yes, I'm laughing because I'm going to think this is a joke. Now, if it was a joke, I would be like, okay. Mm. We can laugh about it. I don't mind a few corny jokes. Now, what do you think about this one? It's your first, it's a first date. You like him. He's cute. He brings flowers. You got to stop saying he's cute. Well, cause I because wanted to, I wanted to be like okay. it's instantly a lame ass nigga. Well, he doesn't have to be lame, but everybody from after this one, this needs to be regular. Like he brings go, flowers on the first day. I like flowers. I don't want you to bring me flowers on the first day. I date. want flowers. I don't mind it. I think it's cute. I think it's a nice gesture. It's traditional, and I like um, I like a lot of traditional things. Honestly, I think bringing flowers on a first date is so corny. Why? It's just I After like to all get that flowers. Pushing, you just talked about flowers. I like to get flowers, and this is for anybody. I like to get and send flowers in a private way because it's like you gave me these flowers. It's not, it's not a Bentley. It's like okay, oh, thank you. Where do I put these? And where are we going next? Do I bring them? Do I he's send not, them in the car? They're gonna not, die. Why couldn't you just send these to my house? Cause you, is it in a vase? I know I gotta hold them. I gotta put them in the car. You Why don't have a you vase. Bring? You take the the flowers home at the end of the date, and you put them there, and then you think of him the next morning. Send me flowers, my nigga. Send them. I don't want you bringing them on a first date. You don't even know what flowers. You can I bring like. me some flowers, as long as it's not full of fucking baby's breath and carnations. Hopefully you'll be all right. That's the risk you take when you let a nigga bring you flowers. Don't bring and me no goddamn take them, flowers. If you bought them from Publix, Kroger, or Whole Foods, please take them out of that grocery store wrapper. Please, 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 God, please. He opens every door. Oh, I love it. It's giving sex slave, and I'm here for it. I like it. Open the doors for me. But if you walk slow, I got it, my nigga. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're probably not going out again. You're not, you're not too Pick slow. Pick up the pace. Knees to chest. Yeah. If you what open you every, think? I love that. That is, because honestly, that's very rare. So if, if there is a, if I'm with a man, which I am, and you open every door. And the, my man, my man, my, my man. man. <laughs> I love him, y'all. I love him. He opens the doors, the actual doors, the car doors, all the doors. And I think that makes my pussy wet and it makes it throb and it makes me want to do the, whatever you want me to do. That is just, and it's such a simple gesture. It's just like, you shouldn't be opening doors. I got it. Yeah, I like the chivalry. A man that opens doors gets it. He gets that. That's not the, the type doors, of man that's going to complain about paying rent or the mortgages. The leading me places. Like, we get to a restaurant. We just decided to eat on a whim. There is mm -hmm. no reservation, but it's all good because we're just, we just going with the vibes. Mm -hmm. Don't be looking at me when we get to the host stand. Speak up. Say it with your chest. Now, you can complain about everything you saw on Instagram, but now we in front of the hostess who you don't even know. At a fucking place with a kids menu, and now you cat's got your tongue. I don't like that. Yeah, calls you princess. Princess. <laughs> is that corny or romantic? I think it's romantic. That is so fucking corny. <laughs> princess. I put princess with queen. Um, I don't really like that either. But again, if you find, I don't care. I prefer that to my bitch. And the, the, can you believe there That's was a for the hood niggas. But can you believe there was a time when I liked that? I can. <laughs> and I remember it and I was like, wow, okay. Shut up. It's 
<laughs> what? You brought it up. I wasn't even trying to go back to your past. Well, live there no more. You in the princess era. I'm in a so princess like, era, and I okay. love it. I love being called princess. It makes me feel like princess. I like uh, the normal ones, like baby. I like that. I like baby. I like. Well, that's really it. Just baby, not princess. Unless you fine. Then you call me whatever you like. <laughs> Anything goes for the fine niggas. Ooh, I'm just thinking about it. Um. Okay, before we move on to Indecisive, Diane pulls your chair out for you. Is that romantic <gasps> or corny? I love it. That makes me feel like a princess. Make me feel like a princess, but you don't have to call me princess because then I'm feeling like... Let me think about how old you are again. Like, is this age gap appropriate? Because it's giving daddy, daughter, <laughs> king, yeah, pedophile. I don't know. I told y'all I was just watching Inside Man, and there was a pedophile on there. I don't know. Um, but the pull the chair, I love it. I do, I do. And I, I like, you asked me this a long time ago. I said no. I changed my mind. <laughs> when a man orders for you. Mm. Bitch, I tell only, me what I'm eating. I only like it. It's like when I said, if you can tell me what to do, you can tell me what to do. It's like that. Mm -hmm. Some, you can order for me. You can make me a drink full of juice that I don't normally like. But somehow when they make it, it tastes different. I don't know what be happening. Confidence. When the men, When the men make drinks for me who I like and they put even thick ass, nasty ass pineapple juice, I'd be like, this drink is so good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know what, and I'll be saying it, I don't know what you did, because you know I really don't like this, but when you make it, it's good. He'd be like, yeah, I know, and I'd be like, uh-huh. That is wildly insane. Isn't it? Yeah. There's got to be some drugs in there, but keep it coming. <laughs> um. Okay. Acting shy? Uh, yeah, so I asked a man this question, and he said his whole thing that's borderline romantic and corny is it, when, some, when a bitch is acting shy. And trying to act innocent, and you already looked at her Instagram, and you know she's not. And I was like, "Are you talking about me?" Yes, that's insane. Um, I don't even try to play that game because what am I play myself for? Yeah, I don't try to act innocent. I'm just not trying to talk about all the nasty things I'm about to do to you. I don't try to act innocent or shy, but I also I'm not about to sit down and be like, "So." I think people assume that we're just gonna be like, "Okay, we're doing a podcast right now," which is not gonna happen. I'm trying to get to know you, nigga. I'm going to figure out what that dick do sooner or later. Probably sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Don't you worry about it. You play your cards right with those flowers. No baby's breath. Make my drinks right or order my drinks right. You about to be up in this pussy raw. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to move on to Indecisive Ooh. Diane. When we Orange come back, we have some happen. advice to share with you guys and hopefully help you. Probably not. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Hey, ladies, it's me, Diane. And this week, the date is a little creative and a little bit more sexual than normal. So do this with someone that you want to create a great relationship with. Have great sex with. I want to try new things with sexually. Erotic journaling. Our good friend Tayomi told us about that. Listen, buy a journal with your bae. Write your most deepest, darkest fantasies. Or even things that you like that they do or want to try. Bye. Okay, you guys, so we are back from Indecisive Diana. It's time for the advice. If you have a question that you would like for us to read on the show and possibly answer, email us, advice at cocktailspod.com. This one is titled In Love with the Same OD. I want to listen to Jinx Line tonight. I think I might too. Well, I got Zane. Never mind. Hey, besties. Let me just say, you two ladies are legit my best friends in my head. I'm a new listener and I fell in love with this podcast instantly. I'm currently catching up on all the episodes and trust me, that's 
when people tell us that, I'm like, wow, you're getting to know us. Like, you don't know who we currently are. Mm -hmm. You're in like That's the a past lot of phases. phase. It's a lot of heartache, a lot of depression, a lot of anger. You're mm -hmm. getting to happiness. Um, mm -hmm. I'm currently catching up on all the episodes. And trust me, I'm catching up pretty fast. Anyways, let me get straight to it. So currently, I've been in my relationship for a year now. And this is the man I have been praying for. Ooh, he runs two of his own businesses, takes care of his home, even mine as well. Amen. Not only did he accept my child, but he loves her as if she was his own flesh and blood. Very nice looking. And to end that note, he treats me as a queen. Whatever I ask for, I never hear the word no. That's a good man, Savannah. He is my biggest support system in whatever I do. Dates every weekend. The list can go on. Let's get to the problem because now I feel like you're rubbing this shit yeah, in. Yeah, he cheating on you. Or he gave you an STD. Or she cheated. Being with him has taught me to raise my standards on so much more than what I have been settling with in my past. In, in my past dick. dating relationships. I know you can be thinking, what's the problem then, sis? Yep. Well, the problem is the sex. Knew it. When we first got together, we were having sex like rabbits. I mean, our first time meeting, we ended up our night having sex. We ended our night having sex. The sex was fire in the beginning. But now our sex life seems to have slowed down as if we're an old married couple. It's ever so often. I can literally count on one hand how many times we've had sex in a month. With the change like that, it has me questioning, do, does he even find me attractive? Or maybe he's bored with the coochie? I don't know what made it come to this. Then, on top of the slow sex life, it's the same old routine and same old positions. I literally know the next move. Now, oddly, I don't know how to approach the conversation on how I've been feeling about all this because I don't want him to seem like I'm tripping, but I am, and I want that dick like it was before. I know the sex isn't supposed to be important. Says who? Ma'am, you ain't been listening to us long enough. But it's a good percentage in a relationship. Please help me, SOS, your good sis. Let me tell you something, ma'am. Because I'm going to tell you this right now. You have got to take the reins. You got to take control of your own coochie. You got to make the moves for yourself. What the hell is in this wine? <laughs> <laughs> you got to make it work for you. Here's what I'm saying, because this is what I was saying last week. When women always rely on men to take the lead, because that's what this whole, that's what she's saying. He, She knows the next move. Bitch, what's your move? Do you have a move? Or mm -hmm. Are you always making him make the move? Maybe he out of moves. He's been working all day. He's been paying your bills and his. He's he done, taking he, care of he everything. He was watching Peppa Pig with your daughter. And he don't even like pigs. He don't even eat pork. He don't even like kids. He's doing on this is the things where it's He's like tired when women need to you now have to, it's not fair to put all of this on your man. He's he's doing all the things you want him to do. Bitch, what is you doing? Step it up. Get some cute clothes. Do a little role play. Put some music on. Suck his dick randomly. Do it in the car. Plan a date night. Like make it fun for him. I really feel like, ma'am, this is on you. And if you do all of those things and you realize it's not on you, maybe he just has a little ED and he needs to go to bluechew.com and get a little pill because sometimes life, stress, and genetics and other scientific things that I don't know about, it gets you. And I think sometimes we forget about that. Mm -hmm. Like, it takes a lot. And how we was talking about the Minute Man mm -hmm. last week, some guys, they get very sensitive about that because we talk a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. And let's not pretend like we don't because we do. So... Try what Medina said first. See what kind of reaction you get from that. And if it's still nothing, he may be tired of work. And then another thing I'm that you I'm telling you do, right now, it's going to be something because I feel like you're not sh showing him appreciation. That's what I was going to say. Another thing is sometimes appreciation doesn't have to be like a gift per se. Men or something don't even like that. be that. See what you can do to help make their day easier. Take him to the strip club one night. Be like, baby, meet me here. Well, I wasn't even talking about even anything like that. But if mm. you, like you're talking about all the things that he takes care of. Do something to help him. take some of that off of his shoulders. I don't know if it's a money thing or I, I don't know how y'all situation really is. But sometimes it could be something as little as doing an extra chore that mm -hmm. he always does that you know he really don't like to do and you could do because you wasn't doing shit no way mm -hmm. but watch the housewives. Do it. Do something that's going to make 
the other person's life a little bit easier and they know, okay, you were thinking of me because I always do this for you and now you've taken it off my plate. Take it off his plate. That, to me, that makes the world of it's difference. Special. When somebody takes something off my plate, it feels so good. And if you find yourself hearing this and it's making you upset and you don't want to do that, you either don't have any money and you need to not be in a relationship and get your life together or you don't want to be with him because it shouldn't or be you a don't, problem. Yeah, you don't really appreciate him. So mm-hmm. then again... You don't need to be with him and you mm-hmm. need to get your life together. It's still the same result. Sometimes you just got to move on. When you realize that person ain't the person, that's what you got to do. Okay, let me read through this one really quick. Ooh. I'll just do the cocktail because oh, I just looked okay. at the time. If you have a cocktail, send it to cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm blaming both of y'all. Oh, hell. What? She said she's blaming both of us. What we do? Hey, y'all. Just wanted to blame and thank you, ladies, for my current relationship. Oh, okay. You're welcome. I've been a listener since 2019, and you ladies helped make my sex bucket list. Oh. You're welcome. One of the experiences on the list was to eat some man booty. Mm. You are very welcome. In 2020, I met this super alpha nigga. Oh, that's the best ones to get. I met this super alpha nigga on Twitter space. Twitter space. Where they were talking about sex, do's, and don'ts. That sounds like Twitter and MySpace. How old are you? Okay, whatever. I mentioned never giving a rim job, but always wanting to. A few days later, this man slid in my DMs on some, how does one sign up to be your side nigga? It's during lockdown and I'm bored, so why not? About a week later, this man that I have never met in person pulled up to my job and told me to come to his car. P.S. I live on a small island and did my research. He's not a catfish. He's po- he's too popular to be one. Foolish ass me, went over to the described vehicle, opened the door, and sitting in the driver's seat was a bearded, fully tatted, fine specimen of a man, naked. The only thing he was wearing was the four chains around his neck and the five rings on his fingers. He was like, you said you were good at head, let's see, and scooted to the top of the recline seat. I proceeded to suck the life out of this man. Then I realized he was raising his legs a little, but I didn't think anything of it. I just continued. I don't know if dude was frustrated with me not reading the signs, but he turned around and got on all fours, tooted that ass up, and spread that booty. All I could hear in my head was Kiki saying, just go for it. You know, I would have, girl. So I did. That was the most exhilarating first meetup I ever been to. Next day, we were on our first date when, when he fucked me good during some period sex. Ooh. I love period sex. You didn't put a spell on him. But that's a story for another time. I just want to say thank you both for encouraging me to eat man booty and try new things. Because now I'm with the love of my life heading into year three of the best relationship I've ever had sent from my iPhone. See? You're welcome, sis. You're welcome. Eat a little ass, you can fall in love. Yeah. If you eat a little ass, you fall in love. Yeah. Eat that ass, eat that ass. If you suck a little booty hole, you gon' meet your man. Suck that booty hole, bitch. Suck, suck that it. booty suck hole. It. Put a suck little it. finger suck in it. that booty hole. Grab suck them it. balls Make and squeeze it. What? And Make squeeze it. it. Squeeze and then pussy his booty open and spread Bend them it. cheeks Bust and spit it. in his mouth and pay your with his cash at bitch and rob that nigga rob that nigga <laughs> I'm robbing <laughs> now how did we go from eating a little ass to robbing that nigga but whatever you don't know where the Lord is gonna take you you don't it might but... take you to Bali and it might take you to Tulum y'all go to paradiseofvibe.com and please come <laughs> to Mexico with me October 6th through 10th <laughs> And if you're trying to show a nigga appreciation, go ahead and buy Classy Bags because I know you hoes can't cook. I've seen the meals and I've seen the paper plates. Okay, but buy some plates first. Matter of fact, I need to link my Amazon store because I'm tired of seeing plastic, styrofoam, and paper, little Dixie plates. Grow yeah. the fuck up. Are you Y'all in cutting through plates and having gravy fall through the cracks. Okay, how you got a wet spot on your pants? Where is the table? Where is the plate? 
Where is the cutlery? Appreciation. Anyway. Anyway, my appreciation is that I wrote the recipes. So go to classybase.com, K-L-A-S-S-Y-B-A-S-T-E, digital download, physical copies, and individual recipes if you just want to try it out. But I heard, I, I got a few appreciation notes from niggas. Cause you they, did? From the girls that cook for them, and he saw where the recipe came from and said thank you. That's and I was like, I feel love. like you're trying to cheat, but I appreciate you too. That's love. That's love. Mm -hmm. And men who are trying to, you have a birthday coming up for your girl or something, you want to get her something special, get Classy Base. Yeah, make make the shrimp scampi or the lemony chicken thighs. That's going to be mm. easy. Easy peasy. It's going to look decadent. And she's going to be like, oh my God, for me, these are not the pre-cooked pink shrimp. It's not a dry ass chicken breast. Only the best for you, baby. And Princess. It's cheap. All right. So do all of those things. Make sure you buy the tickets to the live shows. Sign up for our Patreon and then make sure you're following us on Instagram. We're at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. And until next week, you guys, goodbye. goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.